Welcome to Making Housing and Community Happen 101, Module 1, The Problem, Focus, How We Get Our Work Done, and Why Religious Engagement is Important. In Module 1, you will learn about the housing crisis in the U.S., California, and Pasadena, who needs affordable housing, and why we focus on affordable housing and engage religious communities. The Problem. What's the housing crisis like in the U.S.? Well, in the United States, no state has an adequate supply of affordable rental housing for the lowest income renters. On this map, you can see what it takes for someone working full time to be able to afford a two bedroom apartment in every state in the union. And if you look at this, you can see that nobody that works full time at minimum wage can earn enough to rent a two bedroom apartment in any state. In fact, even two people working full time cannot earn enough in any state to be able to afford a two bedroom apartment. This is taking into consideration the national minimum wage and then the state minimum wages. And also that someone pays no more than 30% of their income on housing. In no state can two people working full-time at minimum wage, earn enough to afford a two-bedroom apartment. Some In some states, they come close, but uh, in no states do they actually get there. The U.S. has a shortage of 7 million rental homes affordable and available to extremely low-income renters. And by low income, we mean below the poverty guideline or below 30% of the area median income. Uh, the median income for the United States as a whole is almost $51,000 for a family of four, but in some states it's higher than that. So why do we engage the religious community? Well, people of faith comprise nearly 75% of Americans. So even though faith has declined over the years, still almost three quarters of Americans identify as being people of faith. And the largest majority of them are some sort of Christian. But we are open to people of all faiths and also to people of conscience who aren't religious. Here you see quotes from Proverbs and from the Quran, both of which express a concern, an affirmation of justice in society. Justice is a universal value. In the New Testament, in Matthew 25, we are told that nations are judged in how they treat the marginalized. They are judged by how they, uh, by whether or not they take care of the most vulnerable among us. Um, this is the parable of the sheep and the goats. For those of us who are most, who are familiar with this parable, we're used to thinking about it as being in terms of individuals. But if you actually read the parable, it's about nations. Nations are judged by whether or not they take care of people who are hungry and unhoused, people who are strangers, by whether they take care of the people who are the most vulnerable. The Dalai Lama, who is Buddhist, said all, religious, all religions try to benefit people with the same basic message of the need for love and compassion, for justice and honesty, for contentment. And Mahatma Gandhi who came from a Hindu background, but is claimed by everyone, said the greatness of humanity is not in being human, but in being humane. Earth provides enough to satisfy everyone's needs, but not everyone's greed. So back to the problem. What does the crisis look like in California? Well, one way we can get at this is by asking, how much did one person need to earn per hour in a 40 hour per week job to afford a two bedroom apartment in California in 2021? So that's getting back to this map. And if you notice on this map, California, the answer is $39.03. That's how much a full-time worker needs to earn to afford a two-bedroom apartment in California. And if you notice, even two people working full-time at minimum wage cannot do this in California. The minimum wage in California is $15.50 an hour. Having a job does not guarantee that you will be able to have a life or a stable, affordable place to live. 
and businesses cannot pay wages high enough to cover employee, employee housing costs. So jobs are leaving the state. Now we want employers to pay a living wage, but housing costs have spiraled out of control so much in recent years that for a lot of businesses, this is not realistic anymore, especially small businesses. And this graph shows uh, people divided up into three income categories, low, middle, and high. And we can see that in the last decade, between 2010 and 2019, low and middle income people were uh, on balance leaving the state. We had a net loss of low and middle income people. The only category in which we had a net gain was in high income people. So uh, low and middle income people increasingly cannot afford to live in, in California. But a lot of people are still trying to make it work. And so they have different strategies. One strategy is to stay within the state, but move far away from where you can work to some place where housing is cheaper. People move far from their jobs to afford rent or to purchase a home. But then that causes jammed freeways and pollutions because they have a long commute. That's a stress on them. It, cause, it, it results in high uh, cost of gasoline prices and wear and tear on the car. And it causes jammed freeways and pollution and global warming gases. The problems compound. Another strategy that people use to stay in places like Pasadena is to double up in apartments. I've encountered this in multiple situations where I've encountered families living two and three families to a one bedroom apartment. So that's like 15 people or more in a one bed bedroom apartment. Uh, Jill uh, visited a home where there were 10 families. And then some people fall into homelessness. So uh, this, is, this is what happens here in Pasadena. How many people in California are homeless on a given night? Well, at the last point in time count for unhoused people in California, the number was 161,548. That's 40.9 homeless people per 10,000 people in the general population. And the numbers keep rising. And LA County is the homeless capital of the US. According to the 2022, point in time homeless count, there were almost 70,000 people, 69,144 people unhoused in Los Angeles County. Now in Pasadena, we're doing a little bit better. We recently went through a 10 year period where homelessness declined by over 50%. But this is the situation in Pasadena. More than 62% of Pasadena residents are renters. Now, maybe that's not a bad thing necessarily, but one in four of those renters more than one in four, 27.6% of renters spend more than 50% of their income on housing, which is considered severely cost burdened. Because if you're spending more than half of your income on housing, you're being squeezed. The rule of thumb is that you should spend no more than 30% of your income on housing needs. According to the city of Pasadena, 17,000 people are on Pasadena's waiting list for Section 8 vouchers. A Section 8 voucher is a voucher that people who qualify can use to help them rent an apartment. Initially, tenants pay no more than 30, 40% of their, their income on rent with a, with a housing voucher, but this may go up over time. And let's look at racial disparities. Let's look at the racial makeup of Pasadena. Right now, Pasadena is about 8% Black or African American. 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, 1990, uh, it was about 19% of the population. So the African-American or black pop population has decreased by more than 50% in the last 30 years. But 8% of Pasadenans are still black or African-American. And 33%, almost a third, are Latinx. But let's look at the unhoused population. The racial makeup of the unhoused population in Pasadena is more than one-third African-American or black and 44% Latinx. So both of these populations, Black and Latinx populations, are overrepresented in the unhoused population in Pasadena. If we do nothing about uh, the housing crisis, it will widen the racial wealth gap. Black households will have just 22% of the wealth of white households in 2031. The racial wealth gap is one of the keys here, and it is something we must eliminate. 
Racial disparities are not accidental. They didn't just fall out of the sky. They were planned. In The Color of Law by Richard Rothstein, it describes how housing affordability is inextricably linked to racial discrimination and redlining, but not just discrimination and redlining, which aren't government uh, 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 government laws. That's not government planning itself. Rothstein's book shows that the government played a role in codifying racial discrimination and segregation. Redlining is a real estate practice where real estate uh, the uh, real estate agents would draw red lines on a map and that to, to divide the city by uh, race and ethnicity and also sometimes by class and then steer people into those neighborhoods, thereby segregating the city. But it was not a government program necessarily. And um, and it has, at least officially, has uh, gone away. Uh, although you can argue unofficially it is still with us. But zoning is government legislation. And zoning began, well, single family zoning began in 1916 here in California as a strategy up in Berkeley, of all places, to keep people of color out of a white neighborhood. That's why it began, for the purpose of racial segregation. Then it was noticed by planners in other parts of the country and took off across the country like wildfire as a segregationist strategy. So zoning, single family zoning does that. And it's even though it's still not, uh, well, it's no longer uh, explicitly racist, it's still classist because it says that in certain parts of the city, you can only have single family homes. Therefore, only people who can afford single family homes can live in that part of the city, which is by definition classist. And because there is a racial wealth gap, it's also racist. It, it exacerbates racism. Let's get back to Pasadena. Apartment re rents in Pasadena have increased more than 50% over the past decade, but incomes, real incomes, rose only 0.2%. The way we figure that out is that in 2018, Pasadena's median household income was approximately $78,941, which is... 15% higher than the $68,400 per year median income of households in 2010. But after taking inflation into account, Pasadena's median income rose only 0.2% or hardly at all. And you can see that Pasadena, even in the context of LA County, is an outlier. Uh, rents are rising here much faster than most places in the county, uh, more than twice as fast as in Los Angeles. And even uh, faster at a, you know, it leaves Santa Monica and Long Beach, which are high housing cost areas, even further behind. So even in, in the context of Los Angeles County, we are extreme. Pasadena is extreme. So then why do folks become homeless in Pasadena? Economic reasons. That's the number one reason. Today, 75% of homelessness in Pasadena is due to unaffordable housing. Typically, this is short-term housing. So these are the people that are unhoused or experiencing homelessness, but you typically don't see them because they're not on the street. They may be in shelters or uh, living in their cars. They're not as vi visible. And this is uh, more than two-thirds of, uh, of people who are experiencing homelessness in Pasadena, 68%. About 32% are what we call chronically homeless. But let's look at that definition for chronic homelessness, because this is 20% of the national overall homeless population. To be considered chronically homeless, you have to have a disability. So if you don't have one of those, then you're not counted in that part of the population. And you have to be homeless at the time that you are uh, counted for one continuous year with no breaks or four times in the last three years. And there are a lot of people that we would normally consider chronically homeless that don't fit that definition. Because let's say they have uh, SSI income, which a lot of people on the street do. And they use that income to get themselves a hotel room last week because it was raining to get themselves off the street. Well, they just broke up their continuous year of homelessness. If they got a hotel room last week, then they're, they weren't considered homeless while they had the hotel room. So they no longer have one continuous period of homelessness nor do they have four periods in three years because they may only have two periods of homelessness. So they don't fit the chronic homelessness criteria. 
So what is the fastest growing uh, group of unhoused people in, in Pasadena? It is seniors. The fastest growing group of unhoused people in Pasadena are seniors. In Pasadena, homelessness uh, among seniors has increased by 65% in the last three years. This is because when housing costs are skyrocketing, seniors are the most vulnerable population because they tend to have fixed incomes. So they become homeless. So who needs affordable housing? Renters need affordable housing because rents inc are increasing faster than income. First time home buyers need affordable housing because the median price of a home in Pasadena is now over a million dollars. So to be able to for, for the down payment, not to mention the monthly mortgage payments, a lot of home first time home buyers need assistance. But even if you're a homeowner, there are housing costs that uh, can be difficult if you're low income, especially on a fixed income. Um, there are maintenance costs. And the older a home gets, the more maintenance is needed and it gets more expensive because of inflation. So if you're on a fixed income, this can be a hardship. Also, homeowners can be foreclosed on if they don't keep up with their mortgage payments or even their uh, property tax payments. They can lose their home and then they're homeless. So even homeowners need help in this, in this climate. So why do we focus on affordable housing? Because no law requires affordable housing. It always happens as a result of advocacy. This is true of our inclusionary housing ordinance, which requires 20% of new developments to be affordable, or they have to pay a, a fee into an affordable housing fund. This came about because we advocated for it. We organized and advocated for it. The same is true of almost all housing policies. A healthy city provides an array of housing options at various income levels in close proximity to jobs. That's what a healthy city provides. An array of housing options for different income groups at close proximity to jobs. Why do we focus on affordable housing? Because affordable housing creates a healthy and sustainable city. A city where all are welcome and all are needed, not just the elite, but gardeners, house cleaners, waiters, dishwashers, workers at dry cleaners and car washes, teachers, police, and on and on, everyone. Why do we focus on affordable housing? Because God cares about cities where all have safe, secure, and affordable homes. Whereas Micah 4.4 says, where everyone beneath their vine and fig tree will live at peace and unafraid. And vine and fig tree was an expression that was used to refer to a home. So let's take this quiz, true or false. True or false. You need to earn $15 per hour to afford a, an apartment in Pasadena. Well, that's pretty much false because there, you're not going to get an apartment for $15 an hour. As we see, in, it's, as we saw in California, um, the a two bedroom apartment on average, uh, someone needs to earn thirty nine dollars an hour for that. So even two people at fifteen dollars an hour in California typically cannot afford a two bedroom apartment. True or false? Twenty seven point six percent of renters in Pasadena are cost burdened, paying more than fifty percent of their income on rent. Unfortunately, that is true. More than one in four renters in Pasadena are spending more than half of their income on rent. They are being squeezed. And number three, the fastest growing segment of the unhoused population is the mentally ill. False. The fastest growing segment of the unhoused population are seniors, people who tend to be on fist, fixed incomes and cannot keep up with the spiraling uh, out of control housing costs in Pasadena. So multiple choice, those who need affordable housing are A, employers for their employees because they don't pay enough, B, the chronic and short-term homeless population, or C, city staff and teachers, or D, all of the above. And it's D, all of the above. All of these people, all of these uh, uh, people need affordable housing because the housing cost of market is not providing it for them. So thank you so much for uh, attending and or watching this video. 
And um, this concludes module one of MHCH 101. Thank you for tuning in, for watching. We hope that you will tune in for or watch module two, the history and mission of our organization. Thank you and have a good day or night.